we'll now move to the animal system. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, these artist general overviews pop anything in Q and A. Um, so digestive system, we've got the general kind of movement of it here. So we have all of these different parts that you may be familiar with. So generally we're going from the mouth where moving the food from the mouth to the stomach via the esophagus. We've got input from the liver, from the pancreas. Our food moves from the stomach through to the small intestine, then through to the large intestine until it's excreted out as feces. Okay, so in terms of the purpose, um, basically we get our nutrients from our food, we get our energy. Again, with cellular respiration, we need that source of glucose to provide ATP. Food is where we get it from. Um, so obviously we need glucose in its like raw form. In food, that's not how it's presented. So we have to digest and break down the food in order to get the glucose basically. Um, so digestion occurs both to physical and chemical mechanisms. So we've got physical stuff like um, peristalsis. So when the esophagus actually, like you can kind of see it in that video. Um, sorry, I like pointed at it. You can kind of see it um, here, it moves. So that idea of peristaltic movement, it's that actual like constricting and relaxing of your esophagus, your um, intestines do it as well. And it actually physically moves the food along. But then think about, you know, the acid in your stomach, the other digestive enzymes, that's the chemical part of digestion as well. Um, so yeah, essentially, yeah, we just have to get our nutrients from food basically. And that's why the digestive system is really, really important. So very similar to the kind of flow we saw with the vascular bundles and the plant. So for our digestive system, the specialized cell, this is kind of just an example. There are obviously different cells in the stomach and the esophagus and all the stuff. Um, but with the small intestine, we're thinking of villi. So you guys may be familiar with this. It's like these little extensions that are in your small intestine and they absorb nutrients and things like that from food. Super, super important. Um, so all of them together, they create the tissue and then that creates your small intestine, which is just one organ in your digestive system leading to humans as well. So you can see this again, this step-by-step -step kind of organization there. Okay, looking at the excretory system. So we have kidneys again. This is quite a complicated diagram, I would say. Um, the excretory system for me is probably the hardest one to grasp initially, I would say, just because there's a lot of different terms and you have to think about it. It's a very process-based kind of thing. Um, but yeah, just as a general overview, we have our kidneys here and we have these little specialized um, cells, so our nephrons. And we can see, as you can see, this is what a nephron looks like. It's made up of these other things here. Um, so we've got our important things, probably like these two, proximal convoluted tubule and your distal convoluted tubule. Again, I'm just mentioning the names now, but what they're really important for um, is basically absorbing things that your body needs and excreting things that they don't. So the kidneys are super important in filtering. So they filter your blood and they will draw out things um, again, that the body needs more of and anything that can go to waste, that will be your urine essentially. And you'll excrete that. Um, so yeah, you'll learn more about that in an in-depth, an in-depth process of that. But hopefully this kind of familiarizes you a little bit with what nephrons look like. So we can see this is a bit of a more basic drawing of this. Um, so here, this is what important. So Bowman's capsule, you can see that this is the blood and this is the um, part where we're actually doing the filtering. So blood basically enters your kidney. Again, like literally just think of your kidney as like this little filtering system. Um, so we have a Bowman's capsule here and this will filter out um, basically anything yet that can be excreted really. So then everything else, the blood just continues on flowing. So once we've kind of excreted things here, um, this will go through all of this stuff. So your proximal convoluted tubule, your distal convoluted tubule, it goes through all this. An important part here is your loop of Henle. I don't think it's written here, but here, your loop of Henle. This is really important in um, basically absorbing water. Um, so if you are a little bit dehydrated, like you can absorb some more water from the urine and that's when you'll produce like really concentrated urine. Um, whereas, you know, if you're getting a lot of water in, maybe like your urine can pass and you won't absorb as much water because you know you're getting enough in, if not even more than you need. Um, so that's a really important part as well. So you can see here, we're absorbing things, um, salts, glucose, amino acids, water, stuff like that. Um, again, that can be absorbed out and everything that is not reabsorbed. So everything that's not kind of taken in by all of these, 
that gets shoved out basically as your urine. So hopefully that makes sense. So here you can see the step of filtering. Again, really important. Think of this idea of filtering. Here you reabsorb stuff. Um, three, don't worry about it too much, but four, you're basically just pushing out waste. So anything that doesn't get um, reabsorbed, essentially. Hopefully that kind of makes sense too. Again, it is a relatively complex process, um, but just understand it's this idea of excreting substances that your body doesn't really need anymore. So in terms of our specialization here, we've got our nephrons, we've got our kidney tissue leading to our organ of the kidney, forms our excretory system, also known as our urinary system as well, leading to us as the organism. Okay, last one we look at is the endocrine system. Um, so we've got our glands, so those are the organs we're kind of referring to here. They are found everywhere. I'm sure as you know, endocrine system, I think you do from memory, unless I change it, you touch on it in year 10. Um, here you look at it in a little bit more detail. Um, so you've got your endocrine glands and they're really important at producing specific hormones. Um, and with hormones, we think about them being these sort of chemical messengers that are relatively slow acting. So they have these kind of diffuse effects most of the time. Um, and those can be things like growth hormone. They can control, um, you know, if you think about insulin, like things with glucose, even hunger, um, sleep hormone, stuff like that as well. Like they have a lot of different, I guess, applications and uses, obviously, depending on where they're released, when they're released as well, stuff like that. A really important thing to focus on is this idea that they do travel in the bloodstream. So therefore they can reach things that are far away but however, they may take time. They may be a little bit slow. Um, okay, so in terms of glands, we're thinking about controlling how much of each hormone is released. Um, and this depends on what is triggering the hormone release and how much of the hormone is already there. Um, so we can see you would have had this, like, you know, things affecting hormones. So you can see changes in the fluid balance. You can see infections as well, stuff like stress, um, age as well. Obviously, that differs in terms of hormone release too. Okay, so obviously this is quite a general overview. Like we'll look at homeostasis a little bit and you can kind of think about it. Um, but wherever the glands are, they'll have these special cells, so your epithelial cells, and they're secretory. So they secrete something. So basically, like we talked about organelles before, they'll produce, um, for example, let's say it's a protein hormone. They'll produce these proteins that are hormones and then they'll export them. So they'll secrete them from the cell. Um, and those will be our glands, and these glands form our endocrine system.